Assalamu alaikum. This is Joshua Salam, and you're watching Dean Talk. We're back with Shuaib, Imam Shuaib, and, and Abdullah, and Reverend Kristen, and Abiha. These are wonderful guests. I hope you've been uh, watching. If you didn't, go back and watch the previous segment. So, this is our last segment. And uh, uh, I think uh, during the break, I was talking with Imam Shuaib, and he said he you know, wanted to bring in something very critical, tying this into the religious tradition from the Muslim perspective. What was that? Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had uh, Abu Bakr, who was very knowledgeable about different tribes and their cultures and customs, and he would get advice from how should, you know, what are these people like, and when he spoke to people, he would speak in their dialect. And there's a tradition from our Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, when you teach people the religion, speak to them at their level of understanding. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll become a liar against God and His Messenger. You'll have lied against God and His Messenger. So, like, you don't go to a child and tell them about the intricate details of theology and because and, it's not at their level and they might come up with stranger understandings than, than what you're trying to teach them. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, I think as Muslims in, living in the West, we have to get to know what's going through the minds of others. Like, I listen to Christian radio, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to understand my, my, our cousins in, in, in another faith. And, and similarly, and we have to also show that Islam is a unifying religion. For mm -hmm. example, most people don't know we fast on the day of Ashura, which was the day Moses and his people were saved from Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. This is a celebration for us. We fast those days and, and we glorify God's you know, mercy to mankind. And, you know, it's, it's a victory given to the children of Israel. And that's our celebration. So, so what you're saying is based on that story yeah. that you just related, you're telling the Muslim American community that they need to what? They need to know each other. Mm -hmm. As the Quran says, you, you must know one another. Mm -hmm. Allah says, O mankind, we created you from male and female. Mm -hmm. And we made you nations and tribes so that you may know one another. Mm -hmm. And the best amongst you are those who are most God-fearing. So, so, so... Even even as a minority, you would say that you know, like, hey, we're the minority. They should they should, uh, you know, be trying to get to know us. Why? Should, how are you going to tell us to try to get to know them? Well, because we have to. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, you don't go to a group of atheists and talk to them about the evils of polytheism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even believe in God. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, when when we're dealing, and, and this mostly for interpersonal communication or in our work and office and school. You know, when we talk to our friends or colleagues, we have to know what's their ideology, mm -hmm. what's their mentality before we start, okay. you know, introducing them to ideas about Islam. Well, one, one of the most wonderful things that's happened recently for our congregation is McLean Islamic Center, MIC, mm -hmm. um, had an open house where they invited all of the local churches and synagogues um, and some of the schools to come and stop by during this big window of time. And they had people that were teaching. Mm -hmm. And you just, you toured their facility, it's relatively new to the neighborhood, and they um, had people that would take you on a tour and just do some really basic teaching, ask what you knew about Islam, yeah. do some teaching. They invited us to come and be there during their noontime prayer, and they explained each of the pieces of the prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's just that it's their responsibility to do that, yeah. because it should be the responsibility of those who, as you said, have that privilege of being the majority uh, to go the extra mile to welcome those strangers among us, and yet that's where we are. But it was such a wonderful event in our community mm -hmm. to be able to go and just greet one another Absolutely. and build some relationships. And, you know, I ran into somebody from my kid's preschool there. Mm -hmm. How cool. You just get reminded of what a small world yeah. we live in. Yeah, and can I just say something? Yeah. Uh, Adam Center, I've, I've been working with some of our students. We're putting together an exhibit on May 6th, inshallah, inshallah. in Adam Center. They're all, all of our students, they're making different art projects to, to show Islam in a 3D, you know, beautiful way, because art attracts people. And if you put the information there, it's a people, common yeah. language. Yeah. So, so we're trying to do this exhibit, and I'd like to invite you on live yeah. TV to come. No pressure. no pressure. But you know, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, though. Yeah, uh, Joshua, I wanted to mention something. OK. It's, what you brought up was really fantastic. Um, uh, because last year I was invited to Temple Road of Shalom in, in McLean. Community. Beautiful community. Mm -hmm. they, they took the responsibility on themselves to invite Muslims at MIC to come speak and do a panel discussion in front of 200 older uh, you know, Jewish mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, folks. Mm -hmm. And that was wonderful. That was, mm -hmm. that was beautiful. So just sitting up on that stage and seeing everyone there, um, you know, and how 
you know, how seriously they took it, you know, to really understand who I was. I was like, subhanAllah, like if, if the Jewish community is reaching out to us and we're just like sitting in the background, like I, I can understand when Muslims say that, you know, it's not my responsibility to teach them because, you know, you know it's not my fault that I'm, you know, uh, that there's an Islamophobia network of $200 million. It's not my fault that, you know, there are extremists who are, you know, hijacking my faith or there are reformists who are hijacking my faith. It's not my fault. But at the end of the day, you know, if you have the power to change something, that is, that is, you know, something very, very true. That rings true in, you know, everyone's hearts and minds. And so. and the Prophet said, those who know, now pass on the message. Pass on the message. Mm -hmm. And what you bring up is a good point. The effort, they, you were invited. Mm -hmm. And... It, the, the open house, hap, like it was something that you were invited to. There was effort, right? right. It takes two. It takes two. It, exactly. takes, two. it takes two. And um, just bring it down to an interpersonal level. Uh, at a former workplace of mine, it was Ramadan. And I always take it as an opportunity to engage my colleagues and tell me. And it it's really amazing when your colleagues are telling you, hey, Abiha, it's time to pray. Or hey, you know, and that happens when you build those relationships and you bridge those gaps. And it's, and as I know. As opposed to you can't pray here. They're reminding you. Yeah. I was terrified of like asking my boss like hey can I have a corner to pray in mm -hmm. um, but then once you know I got to that it was amazing my colleagues were so supportive and again building uh, bridges building relationships and opening that conversation mm -hmm. but that's different from like telling someone like hey don't kill me mm -hmm. because I'm yeah. yeah yeah you know the we, we don't, probably don't have time to talk about it in this show, but when you brought up the, the uh, MIC, the, mm -hmm. the Muslim uh, McLean Islamic Center, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that place. I've driven past it, and I have a fear. Wait, Not of the Muslims. I, I, wait, wait, what? Not of the Muslims. Know, where's this going? <laughs> Their parking lot is so small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I fear that they're going to fall into something that so many messages deal with, uh, and this is this wisdom thing that we're dealing with, that once Muslims are trying to do something obligatory, that they believe this is a commandment from God, I got to get to prayer, I got to get to the Friday, you know, congregational prayer, they will park in your living room sometimes uh, if there's no parking space in, in there. And it's difficult for the leadership to approach this from a wise perspective. How do we block off the parking lot, direct people somewhere else? We'll tow their car ourselves if they don't park in the right place, you know, that type of thing. And, and this gets back to Muslims being, you know, the other Muslims like, why would the message do that? You know, you should, uh, yeah, fine, I'll just take the ticket. Why would you tow my car? Or is That's, your loyalty, you know? Yeah, you yeah. know, th this issue. And so we are really trying to struggle with these things of this concept of being unapologetically Muslim. What does it actually look like, you know, as we build these institutions and, and we're kind of spilling into neighborhoods and things like that? You know, there's an entitlement mentality in the Muslim community. Like, you know, people owe us something. Oh, you know, you have an Islamophobia network of $200 million. You owe me your respect and this and that. But, you know, respect isn't you know, owed by anyone. You know, you have to earn respect as well. And when Muslims act, you know, how they sometimes do in public or whatever it is, you know, with complete disregard for, you know, other people and whatever it may be, this is true, this happens, you know. So, um, you know, for example, there's, there's an Islamic principle of, you know, being close to your neighbors, 40 neighbors in, in, in every direction, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if Muslims actually held true to that principle, uh, of that value of being true to the neighbors, then there would be no person in the United States that would have a bad view of Muslims. Really, you think there are places that are, you think, so I'm, I, that surprises me that you think there are Muslim communities across the whole country. Um, my impression no, no, is some I mean, parts. Well, it was in, especially in more heavily dense areas right. yeah, with Muslims there. Maybe not in the rural area where there's yeah. like no Muslim. Like but that's where, that really? that's where so much of this fear comes from, I think, mm -hmm. is in these places where somebody hasn't had that rich opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with somebody who's a absolutely, neighbor absolutely. of a different faith tradition mm -hmm. who only knows people that are just like them, that like, are in a monolithic right, place, right, like, and that are also from a place where... Um, you know, I think that there's a level of um, fear that runs through the systems that Absolutely. is there to help Absolutely. keep those divisions Absolutely. so that those who hold power can continue to hold it. Right. And I think that there are places in this country that there aren't those relationships of course, being built. Of course. So that's can, not what I'm saying. Okay, so I misunderstood, but, but, but the fact that's that, the, the, my fact fear. that the fact that bigotry and everything else can still exist in northern Virginia where there right. is a high yes. you know, heavily yes. dense you know, population yeah. of Muslims. In New York. I mean, or New even York in New York, York right? Yes. Dallas, yes. Houston, Chicago. Yes. I mean in that in that Absolutely. case in that case Muslims are not taking the onus upon themselves. That's what I meant, right? I hear you. Not in South Georgia. Right, right. Yeah. but that's but that's I think some of 
the talk radio. I mean, and right. and I'm from Minnesota, though the cities, but I have family in rural Minnesota. It's the same there. Or um, there's so many places in this country, I'm afraid, where there aren't opportunities to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. And so how do we change the narrative that's only coming from media for the most part because they don't have an opportunity to build one-on-one -on -one relationships and learn right. and get to know. Your um, fear is much more valid than my parking fear. <laughs> you know what's really interesting? Of those many rural co communities, a lot of people live under the poverty line. Absolutely. And sometimes there's some natural disasters that occur. So I remember last year, ICNA Relief, which is a domestic relief organization by the Islamic Circle of North America, there was one disaster somewhere south, and they took a team out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they were rebuilding houses mm -hmm. and doing renovations. And then some people were like, all I see about Islam is through media representation, right. especially when you have 85% negative media representation of Muslims. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that, that takes a toll. Um, so what they were doing was fantastic, right? You know, Muslims going to Flint, Michigan and giving bottles of water. Yes. You know, Muslims going to Standing Rock and, you know, standing in solidarity. Collecting you know, all money to rebuild the exactly. Jewish cemeteries. Mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. there's the so cemetery many work. good exactly. things, but they don't get enough media, yeah. and they don't get enough attention, and they don't get celebrated and lifted up enough, and the story that is in the media is just unfair. And so in those places where there isn't an opportunity to build relationships, we and need to figure out how Dean talk. to, right. Dean TV to get there. Alternative media. Dean Talk on Dean TV trying to create the balance where uh, these statistics of 85% of the media saying this or that about Muslims in America. Uh, as you can see, this was just the tip of the iceberg. This conversation was going in a direction that is really, there's a lot underneath of it, right? And so I'm hoping that you guys can give us some comments, give us some feedback. We could have these exact same guests on this exact same show and go for a whole nother hour about being unapologetically Muslim and what does it mean to uh, bring people to this way, uh, invite people to this way with wisdom. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation. I did. Uh, thank you, Sister Abiha, Reverend Kristen, Imam Shuaib, Abdullah, and everyone out there. Thank you for watching Dean Talk on Dean TV, where we're always on, always live. Sadaq. This Dean TV video was made possible in part by Islamic Relief USA, working together for a better world, by Guidance Residential, the number one Islamic home financer in the US and by Recycle Processes Incorporated.